forever. Dog. Warning, the following podcast contains general pleasantness, an East Coast meat check-in, frakes, and a whole new level of niche Beach Boys talk. All this, plus Ian Riccoboni joins us to talk Disney World Resort TV. Put this episode on an endless loop. It's podcast, The Ride. Welcome to Podcast the Ride, a theme park podcast hosted by three men who would love to see the world presented to them on a TV in a hotel room running in a pleasant loop over and over again. My name is Mike Carlson. Joining me as always, Jason Sheridan. I love that loop. We all love, well, I, any loop maybe. Don't, any don't you think? loop, yeah. Most uh, loops? But I was definitely a kid who as soon as I walked into a hotel room, I turned on the television. Well, sure. Scott Gardner here too. Did Abs- you also have this loop uh, fascination? Absolutely. And and I hope that before I die that my life loops before my eyes. <laughs> that I, In- I get to see a little half hour of all the best stuff that I could have done and did. Well, that uh, would, set to very pleasant music. Well, that would be good if it was infinite too, because then it means like you have forever life. Like life doesn't end. If I could just wow, okay, I think that is my. <laughs> we're start. We're coming That's up heaven. strong on That's today's heaven. I've described topic. heaven. This is how str- this or is how version, high we are on today's topic. That I have just described it as my idea of what eternal life should be. Yes, it's just watching an endless loop of the best possible activities it's a, well, available it, in my life. This is going to come up with our guests and I'll bring them in one second, but it'll it's like when an artist passes away, uh passes away and their greatest hits goes into circulation and they start doing different greatest hits box sets. That's what you would get in heaven is just your greatest hits on a loop. In wow. your head forever. Jeez, cool. Which is, it be gonna, awesome. is it going to be weird like some of the Michael Jackson greatest hits where like three of them aren't me <laughs> and I'm watching it like this is not, I know my own voice. This is not oh, but, me. Yes, you, there will be those, but you'll be like kind of in the background of the memory mm. and you'll be like, oh yeah, I did. I came in the door during this like weird blow up between two people. It's a weird memory that you're seeing. Okay. But you sure. go, oh, whoa, I was there, but mm-hmm. it was very brief. So okay, that's okay. similar to like, you know, Michael did like write the second verse of this. <laughs> he was involved a little bit. So Barely. I grazed this memory. Okay, then it's allowed in the greatest hits. Yeah, perfect um, settled. But yeah, we have a lot to get to. So let's bring the guest in. Uh, he's a professional wrestling broadcaster and commentator for New Japan Strong and Ring of Honor, and more importantly, he's a Beach Boys aficionado. It's Ian Riccoboni. Welcome to Podcast the Ride. Hey everyone, thanks for having me. I, I think the most important is Beach Boy Aficionado. My my son's middle name is Wilson. Uh, wow, wow, really? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How incredible. That's Jeez. Uh, yeah. uh, um all right. Well that bears. That's that's like a, a, a tattoo that you gave your son. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, not even to yourself, you passed it on to and that's what it but that's what the Beach Boys are all about, or family and generations, you know, harmonizing together. So that's beautiful. Yeah, sure. And it's all about just remembering the good times, right? That's my my favorite Beach Boy genre is none of their actual (laughs) hits is the everything that happened from 1981 to present where it's just talking about how it used to be (laughs) the good times. God, I know that is it is a full speaking of greatest hits. You could absolutely do an album, a greatest hits album that is just the songs that are nostalgic for the past, which feels so (laughs) crazy now that their height was like their height was only like five six years long (laughs) and then it's been decades and decades of hey remember the good times three years ago (laughs) it started with do it again you know we got to get back together and do it again and then there's songs that quote do it again Uh, we got to do it again with barbara and rhonda uh, (laughs) probably no it's no not barbara and rhonda and they might have barbara ann and rhonda uh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, unless they got it wrong they're 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 all confused but yeah i know it's like yeah nostalgia for themselves has been their brand since the late 60s (laughs) it's been incredible i mean even that song that ended up on 
Baywatch that was a weird cash grab that was on that early 90s album oh boy. that they did Baywatch <laughs> just to just Oof. to remaster. I know Mike's Mike's been watching them start to finish in, in beautifully remastered high definition. No, Scott has. No, that's me. Oh, well, yeah, Scott, too. Oh, yeah, See, yeah. Mm-hmm. the second time I've confused the, the likes and enjoyments, the first time I reached out to Mike, I was all excited because I thought he was talking about Help, the song about the health food restaurant Brian Wilson started. Oh, H-E-L-P <laughs> on the way? <laughs> yeah. Which was a oh, deep cut. <laughs> so accessible, baby. A G L P, and then it has the Help address of the of of the <laughs> when Brian Wilson opened a health food store called the Radiant Radish. Yes, I don't know how in the world he was the owner of a store. How did <laughs> like just notoriously out of it troubled man, and then in the middle of all that, he ran a store? Did he like right. have to order the pills and the supplements? What did that mean that he owned a store? Which yeah. lasted longer than the height of the Beach Boys. I think it lasted like five years. I think it was open longer. I think it was like 68 through 74 it was open. So really? So his Wikipedia should say health food store owner, it comma, should. musician. Yeah, <laughs> I could be giving misinformation. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. 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 That's insane. So what, really, you reached out to Mike... Hoping for a treasure trove of uh, of Beach Boys stuff, and, and, I, I and only down. now are we unlocking it. And the listeners are reaping the rewards of songs that they <laughs> have never heard of <laughs> well, and may never I'm look sure, up. I'm sure they've brought the recent compilation Sail on Sailor, which is a comp- uh, combination of the 1972 album and the 1973 album Holland that was just released on Spotify. It's great. <laughs> oh, baby. That's that's my <laughs> sweet spot is the uh, I, I love Carl and Passions in Holland and I love the live album in concert from 73 where you yep. got uh, Blondie and Ricky Fatar in the band. So the band is actually good live, maybe for the <laughs> <Right>. only time <laughs> in their history. Dennis Wilson, history for you guys. Dennis Wilson, the drummer of the band, mm-hmm. uh, walked through a plate glass window <laughs> and uh, shattered his hand uh, and thus making him not able to drum for the band. But he still wanted to go on tour, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and get drunk and get laid and everything. Sure. So he's so they had to hire a different drummer. And then he just like stood up in front of the stage with his bandaged, bandaged up hand. Okay. Uh, just like just and he was there just for charm. Moral he, there, support. There were, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Just, just a cheer. Almost like the the mighty mighty boss stones side uh dancer guy oh, except sure. without the dancing <laughs> right right wow. and dennis obviously was the sex symbol as identified by drew carey a couple of weeks ago at the grammys <laughs> salute the beach boys to which mike love looked like someone insulted his mother because obviously <laughs> obviously mike love is the sex symbol of the yes. beach boys in this is own, something Scott and I were just mind. talking about a couple days ago. Mike Love's presence on this CBS Beach Boys special from the like balcony, mm-hmm. essentially. His, his Statler and Waldorf-esque yeah. presence. Uh-huh. He was literally a Statler and Waldorf in their spot in the theater, yes. watching all these new acts. Uh, uh, I guess he didn't let, you know, make fun of them terribly. Maybe after the fact, though, I bet. Right. Uh, uh, Ian, we, we were talking about, I thought he liked uh, Pentatonix the best because he was like standing for them. And he gave a big thumbs up, but I don't know if you noticed something different as far as his enjoyment of all the acts. He's tough to read because if he's at an event, he plays the game well. He plays the game really well. So it doesn't matter which administration it is because, you know, some people <laughs> say that, you know, he's with 45. But let's not forget, it was Ronald Reagan who did not let the Beach Boys, who had to, he had to fight his interior secretary to allow them to play in Washington, D.C. in 1983. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. So, yeah, because they brought the wrong elements. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the Beach Boys did an annual concert in Washington, D.C., and it was canceled by James Watt in the Reagan administration, who <laughs> said, no more of this. Uh, we're getting some family-friendly entertainment. Wayne Newton will be doing it. Oh, wow. Kicking off a giant controversy. Everybody was furious at James Watt. Uh, uh, you know, like the, the, the only uh, correct case of anger at anyone in the Reagan administration. <laughs> uh, otherwise, <laughs> but perfect, flawless yeah. r- eight-year eight run. And the only time anybody got anything wrong. But then it, then it led to great footage of all the Beach Boys showing up, hanging out with the Reagans, and Dennis drunkenly sweatily <laughs> hanging off of Nancy <laughs> uh, just like s- just sweat dri- a puddle forming at Nancy Reagan's feet as this man in the, the final throes of his life soon to drown um, <laughs> uh, hanging out of the White House with, uh, with our first lady wow mm-hmm. now 
Now, Scott, you're you may be more of an expert than I am. Was that the same clip where he goes, where he just yells his name uncontrollably during the introductions? I had never seen that. You <laughs> you sent that to me because uh, yeah. I was I was trying to do some the backlog of when did when have we interacted on on Twitter before about the Beach Boys, and that was one where the band's all introducing themselves. Hey, I'm Al Jardine, and I'm Bruce Johnston, and then he gets to the mic and just goes. Dance! <laughs> it was the 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 Miss World yelling France of its day, <laughs> the Howard Dean moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It bridged the gap. That was the great yell of the '80s. Then then Dean took it over. So many great yells oh, over man. the years. Wow, Scott, how does this feel? Because we've teased, long teased you doing a full Beach Boys podcast. Does this feel like cathartic in a way to keep to say this out loud on a microphone? Mainly, look, I, am I uh, am I thinking about the listener who grew tired of this in the first minute? Absolutely, mm. but am I also thinking of the episode after episode slog of hearing about the perfect albums by Green Day and Brian Setzer and Aerosmith, <laughs> the bad boys. Mm. I feel like I've I've earned this. I'm not going to milk it, though. Sure, I'm going to sure. step away. Uh, we don't have to do this forever. Uh, uh, but, you know, although maybe maybe we should just go straight into an after show uh, mm. when all is said and done. But you know what? I'm I'm going to take it well, and I'm going to milk it. Well, well, I'll let Ian, if you want to have uh, uh, just for now have a closing thought on the Beach Boys not that mm. it can't come back during the episode but I was oh, yeah, gonna I, point. you sent me a video earlier today that you wanted you said you wanted to be played on the podcast periodically oh um, so, sure so Brett uh, uh, there's some, the file is called love if you could cue yes, that up yes I, this is Christmas um, and this is just, <laughs> it's just a little a little Obviously. snippet yeah obviously this is my favorite Beach Boy I think it's everybody's favorite Beach Boy it's it's my glove so that's uh, my. That's going to be my next child's middle name. So, <laughs> Lucky Mike Love, kid. All, mm -hmm. all one word. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to mind. I'll, I'll call them Love, but they're named after Jennifer Love Hewitt. Ah, uh, oh, very good. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, my, a favorite of mine is a young young man. That <laughs> you've, sounded you've weird. You've alluded to this. Well, you had the answer this when we were talking about who's who's Hollywood's leading man and leading lady today mm -hmm. off of those posters and you had Jennifer Love Hewitt so in the tank ready to go yes it was Chase Meridian and Jennifer Love Hewitt here we go this is the clip <laughs> oh boy yes okay Mike Love I knew it was gonna be this Mike Love uh, uh very if you don't know the whole history the cockiest man on the universe in the universe <laughs> and this is him on lifestyles of the rich and famous mm -hmm. oh I am very much a ladies man I, I admit to that yes Life in prison as ladies' man. Just imprison me with a few ladies. That's all I ask. No, it's true. I do like girls. <laughs> he does. So he, he committed to the hat thing a long time ago. Um, yeah, he may have uh, forcibly committed to the hat thing due to his <laughs> early baldness. Uh, uh, I just was looking at a photo when, in 2012 when they sang the national anthem at a Dodgers game, and it was it's the only time I think I've seen him without a hat. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. In, in decades and decades, like only only for America will he allow his bald head sure. to be seen. Wow, yeah. That may, I've only I just recently saw a photo of uh, little Stephen Van Zant without his like trademark bandana around his head. Shocker! Was, wow. Yeah, shocker. I don't know. I forget even where I saw it. It was probably like taken away. Like the lawyers from the E Street Band probably got it removed from the internet promptly. <laughs> But this is yeah, what sleaze merchants allow took this photo. This is like upskirt photos back yes, in the day. Shocking. That's not that's like against he, he needs to give you express written consent. The to nude see leaks pictures with people's without. nudes leaked. Same situation <laughs> as little Steven not having his bandana on in a photo. Yeah, I got an RAR file of uh, <laughs> uh, it's a bunch of pics of little Steven without uh, <laughs> you got sixty five pics of him I without turn bandana. You in, but no, give it to me. Give call me the hard drive. Call it Sans Band picks. <laughs> <laughs> How could they do that to the producer of Southside Johnny's? I don't want to go home. Of course. Uh, well, Cole right. Ryder, Ian Cole Ryder, Cole Ryder right. as well. Yeah, I'm in Bruce. Yeah. You're checking everybody's boxes, including with your, <laughs> as discussed before we started recording, your background of Phillies banners. You ain't. You're aiming to please all of us individually. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. So thank you for that. Um, before we start, we will talk about at least a little bit about uh, Disney World Resort TV yeah. today. But is there any, Ian, you've been a longtime supporter of our show and we'd like to thank you for that. Are there any gripes you have? Are there any sort of other thoughts you've had recently that you want to like lay into us about? Um, wow. We're here. We're ready. We're, we'll take it. You know? Wow. I think I, 
I went through a period last year where my wrestling future was in doubt uh, because, you know, it was unclear where Ring of Honor would go. And thankfully, mm-hmm. Tony Khan bought us, the owner of AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at that time, I released all my gripes. I wrote them down. Uh, most of them had to do with uh, with your old pal, Grandpa, but not, <laughs> not Al Lewis. Uh. Most of them had to do with you bringing up the new Grandpa monster. And, and oh. you see, he... Oh, oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, He's he. I have a long time running rivalry with him, but only in my head um, because he's like the local celebrity here in the area. Um, I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mm. Uh, he's from the Bethlehem area, kind of a sister city. And you're talking and about Daniel Roebuck. Daniel Roebuck, fake Jay Leno. And yeah. he, mm. uh, on the hospital my sister works on, uh, at, at there's, see, I'm so angry. I can't even formulate thoughts. I'm usually a professional. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I get it. Well, they, they put these photos of the COVID-19 vaccine. It was very exciting. Get your vaccine. We have them here. They had Larry Holmes, heavyweight champion of the world, mm. Amanda Seyfried, Daniel Roebuck. And, really? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I'm that's just how, saying. That's the level. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, he's that so, big. I, wait, so then do you, but do you have an issue with it? Or is, or is it like professional jealousy? 100% professional jealousy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm jealous that. You know, they're not talking about Ring of Honor enough in the mor- in the Allentown Morning Call, in the Salisbury Press that circulates in the township. <laughs> you know, that's that's all I'm I'm jealous of. Do I, you, you know, <laughs> do you ever just go to the uh, famous Allentown uh, rest stop, uh, yes. the very large <laughs> rest stop there, and and just listen to see if anyone like, oh, did you see Ring of Honor? Did you watch Honor Club this week? Or or are they all just so, like, did you see Daniel Roebuck's Instagram? Yeah, hundred percent. Are they at the uh, Bethlehem, the casino that used to be a steel mill, right. uh, or then where they're all talking about Roebuck? I I bet you know I try and keep myself again you know uncertain times. I tried to keep myself stress free. I just tried to <laughs> just tried to rein yeah. it in. Uh, that Allentown rest stop really. I'll tell you what, it gets under my skin. I collect magnets when I went out to Disneyland. I ended up with 4,000 of them. Every city I go for AEW, a Ring of Honor, New Japan, I get the magnet at the airport. The Allentown rest stop does not have Allentown magnets, which is probably what? the only rest stop I've ever been to that does not have its major city. So I personally I personally confronted the Allentown mayor about this to have some <laughs> political injunction wow. so that we could get some Allentown pride around here. Wow, did he respond? He did. He's great. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. He said he said there's nothing he could do, but he, he took the time to respond to me. Hmm. So that's not in the May I feel like if you what's the thing that like the Defense Act, like what was supposed to be invoked to get all the vaccines made? Mm. Like couldn't oh, he yeah. devote he couldn't see couldn't he invoke some kind of state that like all right, everybody who's not working, get to work and start making right. some uh, <laughs> defunct like plants plants that usually make like war weapons that are now not working are now retrofitted to make magnets for Allentown. I think sure. all should, that should be nationwide. But if there was if there were less weapons and more <laughs> fun souvenir magnets from I don't for know, Allentown, it's yeah. Just my dream. Yeah, okay, yeah, it can be. Well, yeah. All right, it's all Allentown. Well, they've had such a drought for so long, the demand they, has been they deserve pent it the up. Most. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it Thank makes you. sense. Okay. All right. So wow. people in Washington and Oregon and Kentucky and all over will be making Allentown magnets. Well, and I also all of our listeners around this area, um, could you stop talking about Daniel Roebuck and talk about Ian Riccoboni, please? <laughs> Thank you. That's what the, Thank we're you. calling for today. Is just uh, I know you're gonna I know you want to talk about uh, Daniel around the table, but give it a rest for a few weeks. Get Ian's name out there. You know, he's very good at what he does. Um, So, yeah, I I call on everyone there and around the nation. Change the conversation. Yeah. Jason, (laughs) could you talk to your family? Tell Uh, them about Ian. Yeah, I'll put a call in. Yeah. Okay. Because we need a little bit more Ian and a little less Daniel. But it doesn't count if they just like, they have to go to a public place. His Jason's family has to like go out and oh, talk that's, loudly that's not about it. That's not it. That's not going to happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't get. They can't if they do it in their house. Nobody's going to hear unless they're oh. shouting out of the house. Well, they could shout out of the house. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> get your friends to scream our guest Ian's name out the window, out of their window. Yeah. <laughs> to increase his public profile. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that. Will do. Uh. Uh. So yeah. Okay. So if if Grandpa is the number one thing, and we've we've. Uh, addressed it uh let's talk a little bit about walt disney world resort tv uh ian you're a massive theme park guy 
So much yeah. so that we used a YouTube video a few weeks ago that you posted. I didn't even realize it until Scott pointed it out <laughs> that you had posted the Dinosaurs MGM Studios, I don't know, parade float little show, what, what you would call it. Mm-hmm. But Kind of a show, kind of a parade that's, that's only documented by like two or three YouTube users. Mm-hmm. And as I'm looking at it, like, <laughs> wait a minute, isn't he supposed to be on the show soon? <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing. Thank you for thank you for your or, or, I guess your mom's work. The documentary. Yeah, Sh- Shelly Riccoboni. Um, it, she she used Jason's Jason style rise and grind when we went to the theme park. <laughs> uh, my my dad my dad worked like sixty to eighty hours a week, and we I was a spoiled kid. We had everything we could ever ask for, right? But it was because my dad worked so much. My mom worked forty hours a week. Manager at McDonald's um, in Allentown. Shout out Allentown again. But the the big thing was when we went to Disney World, we were going to get our money's worth. So my dad had it scheduled, but he let my mom pick the tent pole events. So before Fast Pass, before everything mm-hmm. else, you looked at the schedule, you saw when the parades were, and God darn it, we were going to make all of them. So that's why that's why there's such great parade footage, uh, Ace Ventura, uh, MGM Studio footage. <laughs> It's, oh yeah! It's all on my YouTube page. I, I found. I went on your YouTube and I, I found the playlist of vintage Disney home movies. See, so, and you. So you really. You you're the one of the main sources, not just on dinosaurs, but yes, that that Ace Ventura show of like. Uh, there's a Toy Story parade, uh, the Aladdin parade. There's a kind of obscure. Oh. I mean, not obscure, but just that you posted it with the full photo, the full title, 1992 MGM Studios, Walt Disney Resort, Muppets on Location, Days of Swine and Roses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get the full I- proper title of this Muppet, the show where the Muppets were suited characters, not puppets. It was pretty cool. And I remember there's one that, that we definitely have that I that we haven't been able to find. It's of the Ninja Turtles. And it wasn't quite a show, but it they were out and about. And there was music blasting, and they would meet people and take pictures, and they had the stampers. Instead of the autographs, they had the stampers. Oh, yeah. And you, and so we have one of those laying around somewhere, too. We just haven't found it yet. But you could thank Shelly Riccoboni for all that. Yeah. Wow, wow. And and I do. Yes, thank you for all these posts. <laughs> we, this, was a, this is all second gate stuff, so to fill in main gate listeners, two, two like more obscure topics we've covered on the second gate are things that you've just mentioned and that, that you've posted. Uh, this live show with the characters from Dinosaurs, the ABC show, mm-hmm. and then a live show, strangely, weirdly in Disney, of Ace Ventura, like a little mini stunt show uh, uh, with, with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. We were debating these, actually on the second gate which one gives you which one was better which one gives you more of what you want out of the ip and you might be the only one qualified of the four of us here you did watch all of them and posted the videos and had a chance to rewatch. can i give you this little versus ace ventura show versus dinosaur show it's without a doubt dinosaurs i mean they mm, there we go the pic- there we go what the pictures don't quantify or, or capture and the video doesn't quite capture is just how larger than life and how cool it was to see Earl, mm. to see the baby. There was something, that whole trip for me, I was five years old, was a uh, was a blast. I remember, that's, some, that's pretty much my earliest memories of anything where I remember it crystal clear. There's some, something clicked in my brain and was like, yep, this, I'm going to remember this. And <laughs> I remember that was one of the last things we did before we left the park before we checked out of the hotel and it was just absolutely incredible um the float was actually pretty big because they reused the same float over time um they reused it for some other parades so if you would ever see it in mgm it was actually quite big even as an adult i ended up seeing it uh but i just remember the the costumes i remember thinking yeah these are the dinosaurs and i didn't have that same feeling with mickey or with goofy or with pluto mm. i kind of knew i kind of knew the kayfabe of mickey goofy pluto mm-hmm. but i was like no those those are the dinosaurs those are absolutely who i yeah. see on tv every week mm. wow that's wow. a good point um yeah this 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 is you're putting mike in a losing position here yeah, you were okay. you were arguing the point of ace ventura which i i was saying is one of my least favorite things we've ever covered <laughs> I found it so monotonous. <laughs> and we've covered some dreck on we, this we, show. We certainly have. Yeah, well, well, but I love some of the dreck. Some of the yeah, sure. A lot of the dreck I celebrate. Was the Ace Ventura live show uh, not good? Am I am I underrating it? It was okay. I remember my brother liking it a lot. He's eight years older. I would have been 
I would have been eight, seven or eight at the time, mm. I think. Uh, my brother was probably 15, 16. So it was more his speed. I, you can hear my dad chuckle. You can hear my dad really. <laughs> I think hear, it was for the dads, honestly. Yeah, my this, dad. <laughs> this makes a lot of sense. More mature viewers liked the Ace Ventura thing. People that were a little more sophisticated liked Ace's show at MGM Studios versus the dinosaurs, which well, is more juvenile, I think. This is a hell a of a way to put down five year old Ian. Well, look, I just, I'm trying to save a bit of face here with my opinion, which is still correct, sadly. <laughs> That's what I'm determining <laughs> sadly, now. Is sadly that I'm, for us. Huh, sadly, yeah, for everyone else. Uh, uh, I'm right always. Yeah, one against three. One, one uh, completely defeats three. Uh, <laughs> one does defeat three. Uh, it's the ultimate handicap match. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, uh, well, sorry, did I cut you off? Were you saying something, Ian? No, no. I, I was only going to add that there, that same trip that I saw Ace Ventura, I actually was in the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids play area. There's, I have a video of that from the, the previous trip, the dinosaur trip. But in the one where we saw Ace Ventura, I actually knocked down Sting's child, uh, the wrestler Sting, in the play area. He started, I started crying. He was fine. He got up, ran away. Sting came over, and I didn't. This is this shows you what a what kind of a kid I was. I didn't understand that he that it was Sting because he didn't have his makeup on. He had his flat top, but he didn't have the makeup on. He didn't. And my mom goes, "Ian, are you okay? Check if the little boy's okay." Oh, Ian, that's Sting. And I was, <laughs> "No, it's not." <laughs> and she goes, "Yeah, come over." So she walked me over. And I get a good look at him, and I notice it is Sting. It is. I, I start to get it, and I just start crying even more. I don't want to bother him, and and now I <laughs> now I work with him. So wow, <laughs> wow, this That's is terrible. Yeah. Did and he you w- tell him that story? No, God, no. And I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I actually briefly, uh, briefly spent some time with him on Thanksgiving Eve. Um, we we went back to the hotel together. Um, I don't know Sting very well. He's a super cool dude, super nice. His family's great, as I've come to learn later um, when I'm not physically assaulting them in a theme park. But <laughs> yeah, he's 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 a cool dude. I've not yet told him that. Wait, wow. does that mean you've met the kid? I've met his wife, as strange as that sounds. She's mm-hmm. a super talented person um, that I've worked with in different aspects, mm-hmm. but I've not yet met Garrett. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be what, but you know, you do know his name. That's a crazy way to, uh, like, yeah. Yeah. awareness to have of just a kid you bumped into in 1992. Hey, nice to see you. I uh, bodied you in 1992. <laughs> I don't know if you recall. Uh, it was by the big uh, Kodak film canister. Uh. Yeah, it was by the ant. I remember I was goofing around oh, by the wow. ant, and I jumped off, and yep. So you jumped off the top rope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which Shot I've done in a ring of I've done in a ring of honor ring, my only match. <laughs> so. oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so we, we, you weren't down there to see pro wrestling, right? Or was or did you? No, like, it's crazy because just, luck. just just random luck. They were filming Thunder in Paradise, they were filming WCW, they were right, filming right, all right. kinds of stuff. Every reason for Sting to be there. My dad called the Grand Floridian because he heard that's where everyone was staying. And he said, hey, is Hulk Hogan staying there? And they actually told him he was. They actually told <laughs> <Whoa>. him. <laughs> they, wow. blew his, they just blew his spot. They said, yeah, he's here. All the wrestlers are here. And <laughs> Do you want his room number? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My dad's a sweetheart, hates wrestling, but he once chased down Lex Luger in a limo for me, and he once called the Grand Floridian to see if, if Hulk Hogan was there. <laughs> Great. So. Wow. How do, we, how do I know? It, it Doesn't this feel like one of these things that – didn't change until after 9-11 that I know these feel like completely unrelated uh, avenues, mm. but there, doesn't do you feel like that is true that somehow one of the residual effects of September 11th was now a hotel will not tell you mm. of that a famous wrestler is staying there if you a stranger calls. Mm. Yeah, I think you can still check in under an assumed like, hey, could you put here's my credit card and ID and everything, but could you list the the occupancy? As like Alan Smithy or whatever. I don't know. I, I I think that I think that was outlawed nationwide post nine eleven. I think that pseudonyms okay. are gone across the board. No, that's not true. But uh, <laughs> to be a one hell of a way to combat terrorism. Hmm. <laughs> you know how the, you know how they got the jump on everybody? <laughs> Fake names. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you That's think true? Yeah, if Hulk Hogan checks in now, he goes under his Thunder in Paradise character name. Hold on, it's loading. Oh, oh. Uh, Randolph J. <laughs> Hurricane is that his name? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I mean, well, I know Mr. Hogan is not staying here, but there is a certain Randolph <laughs> J. Hurricane. <laughs> if you'd like to meet him. <laughs> also, Chris Lemon is staying here. <laughs> no, no interest. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all right. <laughs> what if you never heard of him? No, no, no. I've seen him many times on the show. I yeah. just do not want to meet Chris Lemon. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 real quick, you know what? We were talking about this too. You are working at Universal Studios now, currently. Yeah, I'm a theme park attraction, kind of, sort of, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> um, but it's tons of fun. Um, I have access to maybe one of the cooler things ever. And it's one of those things where sometimes you don't want to see how the sausage is made. But going backstage on the sound stages and the back lots to see the performers on stilts, to see the Mardi Gras folks, mm -hmm. to see the different parades and things is really incredible. It's a really top notch organization. Yeah. So so, yeah, you're doing you're doing Ring of Honor uh, once a month, a couple times a month. Yeah, just about once a month these days. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and you're shooting it inside one of the Orlando sound stages. That like, are, can you good? Can you tell us? Is it secret? Is it butt up to like City Walk? How close is it to the Hard Rock? Uh, how close yeah. is it to the Hemisphere Dancer? If if I'm if I'm if I have my geography right, when I look out, it looks like where the Islands of Adventure, uh, Jason's favorite area. I'm mm -hmm. the with the obelisk in the middle. Her, um, oh right, the, there was just an episode on it. You can you can see You're that. You're talking about port of entry, perhaps. Yes, yes, oh, okay. port of entry. Got Where it. Jason took the obelisk off the table, refused to acknowledge it within well, the. Uh... Well, we didn't talk about obelisks at all because there's no obelisk at play. It's a lighthouse. Um, so, uh... <laughs> oh man, Ian. <laughs> but no, Ian, that's fine. You're that's fine. You're not a. You're a guest. You're a guest here. <laughs> I think, in a vague shape sense, you could call it an obelisk. In the the vaguest. Uh... Hmm. It's the weenie. It's the park weenie. It's the weenie. Yeah. 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 Yes. We can all agree on that, that it is uh, a weenie. Yeah. So in relation to this weenie, mm -hmm. you're saying you're, how, where can you see? Is there a window where you see it out, out the soundstage? So we can see, uh, we can see the Seuss land to our right. Mm -hmm. What the craziest part was, was the announcers get a trailer there. So I had this nice trailer with like Pac-Man and like a full oven and stove and wow. TV. Oh, damn. And it was pretty neat. They, Jeez. it was, it was pretty cool. Um, so when I'd walk out of this trailer, uh, it, we, I would take a look and I'd see the, the Dr. Seuss rides on my right. And then sort of directly in front would be the, the lighthouse. So it puts us kind of in the, if you're walking into the park, it would almost be like straight on kind of islands of adventure if my geography's right. Now, I've only been to islands in 99, like we went, we went there the 99 or 2000 shortly after it opened and then 2020 during the pandemic mm. i took my i'm a very responsible father i took my both my children and, and my wife during a uh, international pandemic to a theme park <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sure. but those are the you know those are the only two times i've been inside islands of adventure gotcha. J jason's about to press end on this zoom window jason is seething <laughs> you get those numbers up or you're gone <laughs> yeah i see the rage you I know, see the rage in you, jason's you eyes. take an extra day you know you, you ask mr khan like hey can i fly back Two days after we finish, you know, <laughs> I'll get the Khan? ticket myself. Mr. Yeah, Tony, Tony Khan. Khan who owns Tony Ring of Honor. Or Tony oh, gotcha. and Shad Khan. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah the so... ultimate guy. The ultimate guy, in my opinion. <laughs> 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 oh, really? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. I mean, is there? I don't want to. Uh, we'll edit this out. Are you? Can you? Could you just walk right into the park? Is, I, is that I think possible? There's an arrangement. I think there's an arrangement you can at, there was a spot in the, in the group email in the prep email that said for, for ticket information, Okay, please contact nice. someone. So I, I do think there is a element of either complimentary or severely discounted tickets at play. Yes. Okay. So you don't, we wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to like find a hole in a fence and sneak under it. You could just, we were explicitly warned not to do that, mm -hmm. that we would, there would be uh, professional fines and suspensions for okay. real, <laughs> not just wow. the television sure. kind. If wow. we snuck in, so they uh, have cracked down on that at Universal Studios Hollywood too, because you could just walk into the theme park from the back lot like many years Whoa. ago, and now there's giant like fake hedges because it's it's the um, Jurassic World and the exit from uh, Nintendo. 
So it's all blocked off now. You can't just kind of, I think you can get back there if you work there, but like it's not like just like a big open gate you can just sort of wander into. Right. You need a jet pack or something. Yeah. 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 Rocket okay. shoes. All right. Well, it sounds like you have the opportunity and the option, which is nice. Um, right. Have you dined at City Walk recently uh, or mm. is it sort of in and out to do the job? So it's funny you mentioned that because City Walk, uh, my brother's lived in Orlando since 2003. So while I've not been to Islands of Adventure, but more than twice, hmm. I've been to City Walk probably two or three dozen times. <laughs> uh, I, I like those numbers. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. like that. These are, these are pockets yeah. for our numbers. <laughs> yeah, my wife and I are big di- are big Disney heads. Um, you know, we take the we ki- take the kids down, but. Even, it's like having your favorite candy. You can have your favorite candy too many times. Sometimes you mm. just need to mix it up. You need to get some carob cake, like like Brian Wilson sang on on H E L P on his about his about the radiant radish. Yeah, or else so, you end up with a ripply chin. Uh, what a yes, condition your condition yeah. is in. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'd mix it up if there was a free night. We'd obviously go to Margaritaville. I've been of to Margaritaville course. many sure. times, and mm. uh, we used to go to the NBA restaurant. We went to the NBA uh, store, and then uh, the Hard Rock is right next to it. So we've uh, we are City Walk veterans, and I used to go see Impact Wrestling there. So right, yeah. On my my summers home from college. I'm from Pennsylvania, but my brother is down in Orlando. I'd go visit my brother, and I would drive drive over and and see Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, folks I work with now. So it's it's a very small world. It's weird how all of it interconnects. Wow, where was the impact tapings? It was in pretty much the same sound stages. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So that is the the place. Like that's the wrestling place for decades now, I guess. Yeah. There was a weird small one called the AWF in ninety three. Mm-hmm. Before that there was one by Eddie Mansfield. Um, that Kevin Kelly got his start in. Billy Gunn got his start in that one too at a Universal. Wow. That's forever See? ago then. Yeah. Sorry, I just yeah. that was insulting to Kevin and no. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll edit that out. I don't want them mad at me. Uh, uh, wow, man, that's cool. So yeah, we're really we're we're the City Walk thing. It's like Islands of Adventure, sure, but City Walk, yeah, that's yeah, that's our vibe, as you know. So absolutely, which yeah, so I'm and, glad we're we're in agreement on that one. But not and just really quick, though, to back up to something you said, um, you you said in front of Mike and Jason, sometimes you can get sick of your favorite candy and need to mix it up and have something else. Like well, he was talk- this is this is a strange observation. He I was feel saying like, like metaphorically, because if he was literally talking about candy, mm-hmm. I would have been furious. OK, OK. okay yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 You just put other candies in the bulk candy bag. To mix it up, <laughs> okay. you don't need as to long not as you're replacing it with other yeah, candy. Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. Right. I, just, yeah, yeah. I figured that could have been a controversial statement here. Right, yeah, no, it is, but I, I think he was sort of using it in a very like ethereal, you know, not a specific candy based gotcha. argument. Or yeah, anything. yeah, yeah. So I'm less upset about it. <laughs> but now that you're talking about it, maybe I will be upset. <laughs> well, uh, 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 came on, and I'm I'm really ruffling feathers after you so <laughs> kindly, you're coming. so kindly told Allentown and Bethlehem to shout my name from the from the rooftops out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just trying know, to pimp, I'm, I'm picking hey, fights. I'm seeing if no, we it's keep okay. It We're trying to mix it up here. We're mm-hmm. trying to keep it keep it lively. Um, it's like club random. It's look. We it, say a lot of you. You're saying a lot of uh, a hot topic uh, opinion here. Okay, and that's what's happening. We're basically doing a club random here, as far as yeah. as the opinions are concerned. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're a guy used to like helping set up feuds and angles and stuff, and it feels like you're trying to build them on this show now too. It's just <laughs> second nature to you. That's true. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's and that's the play too. And the you got to get so ingrained with it. Like I I made Chris Jericho so mad that I feuded with him on AEW for about twelve weeks. So it it helps publicity wise. Did I take a beating? Did I get slapped in the face? Yes. It, do I did that. Was that horrible and was it embarrassing to my family and my friends? Yes, <laughs> but I was on I was on television and got to feud yeah. one of the greatest of all time. Sure, so. sure. But he, that was twelve weeks where he could have been lurking around any corner with a belt at any time. Mm-hmm. And I assumed he was. I really did. <laughs> so. Sure, sure. And well, by the end of this podcast, I don't know. I may slap Jason in the face. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I said may. I didn't say it was going to happen. <laughs> Not guaranteed. But uh, it's possible. Sure. We've never gotten physical as far as uh, being upset with each other on the podcast yet. Yet. So I don't think we've ever gotten uh, physical in real life because I feel like that's one I would lose. <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay. 
Well, I've never seen you in a fight of like a real fight. So neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, I used to backyard wrestle, and then we used to like fight with each other, but it was never like fists. We were not like punching sure. each other. Mm. So and watch out if there's any tennis rackets any, anywhere Ooh. nearby, because this is Mike is the master of. I've been playing a little tennis <laughs> in my <Ha>. golden years. <laughs> so uh, I, I am in, yeah, I'm in good condition. Yeah. Other than the but uh, you'll switch to pickleball soon enough. Well, I'm less dying running to around, do pickleball. Less That's around. the hottest game. Have you it heard? It is hot. Yeah. People are playing this. It's like tennis, but it's easier, I think. I think it's easier on the joints. Yeah. Okay. Parents can't stop talking about it. Uh, <laughs> my yeah. parents can't stop talking about <laughs> there it. There you go. Uh, uh, all right. We got we to talk a little. Uh, Disney World Resort TV. This is a topic you uh, brought up, Ian, which is a great topic. Something we've talked a little bit about on the show but haven't like we haven't gotten into it as much as we probably should have at this point. So, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about like your affection for this, just to start us off, sure, I'd love to. Um, and I want to give a shout out quick, um, you know, for fun and, and light lightheartedness. Obviously, podcasts are I had to place to be for for a little bit, a tiny bit of history, uh, more academic. I go to Retro WDW. Hal mm, Bowers sure. is a guy there who's. Uh, inside and out knows everything about Disney World. So I, I got with Hal and said, hey, when did this start? And he said about 1973 was the first time that they had ever kind of written anything down about the resort TV. So it was pretty much there from the start. Um, channel 5 was the resort channel, and then Channel 1 was a radio station through the TV. So somewhere along the way, Channel 1 became the bulletin board, maybe the radio station, the combination of the both, and then Channel 5 became the resort TV we know and love. And I really take to it like when you go to a baseball game and you see if you go to Citizens Bank Park and you walk th in and then you walk you're walking toward your seat and it's the first time you see a glimpse of anything. It's the first time you see what you came to see and it's that magic feeling and magic moment. So I, I think it was Jason who said when you get in the room you turn on the TV and, and that's what I did. And some of my earliest memories of going to Disney World I, are the Flying Dumbo, are going on Big Thunder Mountain with my dad for the first time, uh, are the Dinosaurs Parade, and then actually the Resort TV. And it's something where it has that Pleasantville effect, where which you don't really realize until later, where not so, not so much now, because now there's full cable in the room, but, but back the first time we stayed in the Disney World Resort in 1992, we stayed in the Disney Inn. RIP. Um, mm. I think they just call it something else now, <laughs> but uh, they, the Shades of Green, I think. But the Disney Inn at the time, you got like two channels. You got like the the radio station, you which was the bulletin board. You got the Disney Resort TV, and then maybe ABC or maybe PBS or maybe Fox. Like wow. you really didn't get much. I didn't know so this. You, yeah, I, this is new context to me. Well, yeah. yeah. So. When when you were there, Mike, it just it just really you you felt you felt kind of stuck, but also willingly willing to be ingratiated, willing to be uh, a part of the of the scene there. Yeah, it is funny, and I'll play. I have just a cl clip, like if people don't know what we're talking about, of just like the vibe of it. But it is very much watching it now. I go, oh, this is like uh, like the you kids are like stuck in a reprogramming camp or something where they're becoming super soldiers. And it's like, you're watching a video of like, hello, welcome. We will be training you to turn into killing machines. And you're like, this is awesome. Like just the pleasantness, any sort of context or any sort of um, like any sort of message would be, uh, re you would be responding well to it. The way they present the information and the visuals, which Brett, if you could, I have a resort TV intro movie. Um, just like this, it's so, it's such a, wa yeah, washes over you of like, oh it's my It's very God. pleasant. It's very dry, especially in the early years. Yes. In the 90s, they start to make it a little more dynamic. To which yes. I say, no all worries. right, easy now. Yeah, easy. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> oh, no, show us the rides and what there is This is 94's uh, okay. uh, uh, in-room resort TV. Uh, so yeah, whenever you... Welcome to the Walt Disney World Resort. 43 square miles of non-stop excitement for everyone. There's almost no end to the things you have to look forward to, and you've chosen a wonderful time to visit. You'll find fabulous fun, spectacular entertainment, and brand new attractions all over the Walt Disney World Resort. Mm. Here's a quick look around the world to help you see the most, get the best value, and have a vacation dream come true. 
I mean, and the then these... Disney MGM Studios, the most popular movie and TV studios in the world. See a star and be a star as you thrill to great attractions and see real production in the works. Reach the height of fright. And, and yeah, like it just like yes. And remember, you'll kill without remorse. <laughs> and, <laughs> don't worry, that part of your brain will be excised. And you're like, yes, good, great. Uh, uh, it's so pleasant. It's so uh, it's so amazing. I feel uh, so much more relaxed. Yeah, for, for watching it. Uh, um, and, and just just to be really clear, we it, it, if you're staying anywhere on property, any actual mm. Disney World hotel. And at this point, it, you know, it's not like Ian was saying. Now there, now you have cable, you have a lot of channels, a lot of which are Disney-related channels that are exclusive to there. But the main thing is there's always been at least one channel devoted to this half-hour loop that is telling you all the things to do around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, you know, shining light on some of the less famous things. You know, you came here for the parks, but maybe you don't know about the recreation or the nightlife. Mm -hmm. And these, yeah, I, it, absolutely a key part of... Vaca these vacations for me, like you could, because it may it means that the magic doesn't end when you go back to your room. You mm -hmm. can go back and watch footage of all the rides that you went on, <laughs> and footage of all the rides that you're gonna go on tomorrow. It's just a perfect way to like keep you locked in. Like yeah. I never have to break this mode. I can just stay here right. entire vacation long. Uh, and it was sometimes all like practical. Like that's how we would find out about if we somehow missed announcements of new things. In Disney Magazine, Disney Adventures, The Wonderful World of Disney, the Disney Channel. If we somehow still miss something, a video that came to you in the mail, the a vacation video that came to you video, in the mail yeah. every year, inevitably mm -hmm. because we sent away for it every year. The Burn um, Bombs Guide. Uh, we all sure. we all had seven opportunities to learn <laughs> everything that there was to do mm -hmm. with the resort. But if you missed any of those, then this is your list. You can you can catch it here. Yeah, but also if you just like uh yeah, like you were saying, footage of the rides, nicely edited footage. That yeah. it's not it, it it's not like now where like YouTube you can construct a Zapruder film of a ride. You can see any <laughs> ride, <laughs> night or day, any angle you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this isn't sure it's one of the points that they really emphasized in the early ones. The earliest one on YouTube I think is from eighty one. It's with Susan. We all love Susan. Susan's the best, um, but there there's a couple that are floating around on the on the black t tape trading market from seventy five seventy six, um, not on YouTube. But Susan really emphasizes it's a two day park. Now to Jason's point, there were times in my life when I was a kid where we went just about every year. My grandparents lived in Florida. My mom loved Disney. My dad put up with it. We had a good time, but we didn't always get on the rides we wanted to get on because they're often were lines that were 60 minutes, 90 minutes mm -hmm. for the simplest things like Dumbo, like the carousel, like anything that I could do when I was smaller. And, you know, sometimes Splash Mountain, forget about it. It was two hours and we just had something else to do. We were going to go to the hoop doo review. We were going to go somewhere else. So we just couldn't do it. So it was really neat, too, to see the new attractions that maybe you didn't get on this time. If you were spoiled like I was, if you, if you had family like I did down in Florida, you might get to see next time. Or you might be able to to scream and scream and cry enough to get your parents to, to try and wait around in line for for two hours to hit Splash Mountain within the first two years it opened. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes like I'm sure there was plenty of stuff that we didn't get to do because like we weren't even on, we weren't as on top of it. I feel like as even you guys when we were young, our family. I mean, hmm. um, but like yeah, we that video. If yeah, if you're listening, just listening to this, this video showed like a home improvement thing. That right. I didn't know existed. That we went right in that oh. zone. Um, Is that the thing where you're like, your mom and dad, or or the kids are in the shows? Like, because you saw the Lucy. Yeah. We have to uh, ask uh, Ian because I honestly don't know. I think that was one Superstar Television. Was that, uh, that Superstar was, Television? I believe okay. that was Superstar Television. Yeah, you can be on Tool Time. You can do the conveyor belt of chocolates with Lucy. Right. You could be the Debbie Dunning character. Wow. On on Tool Time. <laughs> You yes. wouldn't want a bad one to play. You want Deb. You want the real deal. You sure, want. Yeah. You want to be talking to Debbie. Well, sure. I mean, I, we've Debbie's come up recently because there's a video that's gone viral on my Instagram. <laughs> that is the Tool Time girl from Home Improvement sitting on William Shatner's lap. Viral for you is yeah. mainly Debbie Dunning and well, well, no, Daniel Shatner. Really Shatner. Oh right, right. Debbie's. I'm happy to see Debbie, but again, anything with William Shatner in it is what I'm. And getting. you'll see. So you'll see a babe in your 
feed if Daniel Roebuck is talking to one. If, Ro- oh. <laughs> if Roebuck, <laughs> now we got beef. Now oh, we got yeah, beef I'm, I'm the one. I'm the one saying Roebuck again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying facts. Look, he's a part of our culture. You can't not talk about him. That's right. That's yeah. true. That's fair. That's fair. I, <laughs> one of the the most interesting things about about fake Al Borland, right, was a lot of those things. Sometimes they were blink and you miss them. I mean, there there are different videos that I've watched of this resort TV where there were things in the park that only lasted a month and then were quickly retooled or replaced. Right. Um, you know, the superstar television that moved by so quickly, who wants to be a millionaire? Um, th- my high school English teacher, his brother was the Regis Philbin at the theme park for oh, years. Wow. So, wow. But That's his, great. his big exciting moment was that he was in, I believe the 2002 version of the loop. And he was prominently highlighted, uh, Last name Marsico. Uh, my my English teacher uh, was Richard Marsico. I forget his brother's name, but he was Mister Disney Marathon. He was Mister Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Um, so it was very exciting. He was a big resort TV star. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Do, do you have any footage of that anywhere? Like just take off I the. Can, oh wow. He, yeah, I can I can send that over. But it was uh, it was an exciting time, especially in you know 2003. The next time I went, because now I knew now I knew one of the stars, and you we waited, and then we saw him, and he was on it for like two seconds. It was like the first time I was on MTV. I was on for Blink and You'll Miss It. Got real excited, and then it just moved on. But we got to see him. Wait, so. that at, wait, you were on MTV. I was. I was in a special with Bill Gates. I got cast. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was called The Notorious BG, hosted by Gideon Yago. <laughs> and, I him. Wow. <laughs> and I thought TV was going to be easy. I thought, wow, it's my first week at NYU. I'm answering this casting call. I got cast. Wow, I'm going to get on all of these. And I didn't appear on television for another five or six years. So, <laughs> Jeez, yeah. wow, defeated by the pressure. of. Luckily, there's like a no footprint of this. Maybe it, there's a <laughs> Getty Images uh, photo, which you were not in. I'm sorry to tell you, you did not make the Getty no. Images photo. It's just Bill and no. Gideon. <laughs> I was wearing a bright orange shirt. Um, I, can send, I, I screen grabbed it at the time. I think it's the only surviving... Uh, memento of the occasion. <laughs> this so. fine broadcast. That's surprising to me. The MTV generation loves Bill Gates. He's <laughs> right. so cool. <laughs> uh, wow. So yeah. So so there's got. Well, first of all, there's got to be in the warehouse somewhere. There's like a beta max of that or something. Like an old tape somewhere. But it's the least oh, organized. Sure. But it's know, badly the, organized. And Jason was probably line. in charge of I it when he worked like there and he dropped it. it. He dropped him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> flying everywhere. Uh, um, can I bring up one of these things? You talk yeah. about uh, things that you might not remember if not for these resort TV compilations. And one was there was a really brief snippet of if in the, that intro clip that you played, mm-hmm. Mike. But uh, uh, Brett, I'm going to call for uh, uh, the clip called Mickey Mania. And this is a whole this is a whole other thing to talk about. I don't know if you people generally remember the Mickey Mania parade, but I think I forgot about it. I other forgot than this yeah. documentation. Does it, does it sound familiar that you were there? Okay, okay, in saw it. Yeah. Does, do you guys remember what I'm talking talk, what I'm talking about? Mickey Mania. I don't think so. I, I feel like I've heard the phrase before. Well, I, yeah, oh, you have wait. Mickey Mania, but I think you have yeah, you know it because you have. It. I I think I have seen this. Uh, Let's 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 watch this. I like this really made me shudder seeing a clip here. <laughs> One of the newest delights is the Mickey Mania Parade. Yeah. A salute to the world's most I, yeah. famous mouse that's very big indeed. The the for the listener and Brett, Brett I had a still, but you could also just go back. Can you just find the moment where there's like a big in ah, there it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, this th- I think the premise of Mickey Mania is that how do we pack a parade with as many depictions of Mickey mm. as humanly possible? Some of them literal and some of them abstract. And this frame, I I really jumped out of my skin where there is a. Uh, Mickey with the head that we know, the mascot head that we know, but then a big, tall, inflatable body. So I'm getting some of those like size issues that I have. Right. This is too big of a Mickey. And then lots of like 
it's almost minions before minions, like little mm. inflatable, like they're four feet. T- I don't even know what they are. Are there people in them? Are there children in them? It's like, uh, uh, what do you call it? They're, they're like eggs. They're like, those like nesting Mickey dolls. They're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. A rust, the whole thing is like a, rust, a Russian nesting doll of Mickey cracked open and then 400 right. Mickeys came out. This is a yeah. terrifying parade. And Mickey mania should be called like a nightmare, abstract, abstract nightmare Mickey. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like you're just seeing him in a different way. Weird uh, you're having a, Mick, a Mickey mare. Right. I remember my mom. She was like Arsenio Hall. She it was like she was with the dog pound. She was in like oh she. I <laughs> swear, and my brother can confirm this. Mickey Mania. It was like hoo, 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 hoo. dog pound. Wow, hoo, whooping it up. So loved it. What a specific like, this was, reaction. So you had like yeah. you had to be there, but it was a crowd pleaser. It sounds like oh. Loved it. Absolutely. Wow. That's interesting. I mean, I guess, look, if you're there live, you know, you're going to see a lot of Mickey. Everyone likes Mickey. So I guess maybe it played better live versus now we're looking at it on some old archival footage, basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe it doesn't read right to your brain. Sure. But I would have been swept up into Mickey mania if I would have given the giant inflatable Mickey a big hug. Right. It's it's really interesting to look at these through the because I like jumped. I watched some from the 80s and the 90s and 2000s. And you you can always tell what they're pushing at any given time. Yeah. Um, but there are weird moments where it's like, oh, they're really giving the hard sell to the magic carpets of Aladdin, the little spinner <laughs> ride that is kind of in an odd spot of uh, Adventureland. The cheapest, did you guys, boringest <laughs> ride ever. Very boring. Uh, did you guys uh, come across a thing? Does the phrase pal Mickey mean anything to you? No. Um, oh, no. Okay, this is in, I, I, I don't have a clip of this, but it, it's in a 2001 uh, in the top seven must-sees 2003 with Krissa. Krissa was oh. before Stacy. Um, <laughs> and some of these things we're talking about have hosts. Mm-hmm. I, seemingly the very early ones did, but not always. Sometimes not it's always. just a, a weird disembodied voice, but then you start getting kind of like, Fun, relatable personalities. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. It very much of a piece of uh, the twenty. If you ever remember, was it hosted by Maria Menounos? The twenty, the the, you, the, most, the movie yeah. pre-show. Theater? Sure, yeah. sure. It's like a fake countdown thing, but it's like produced by yeah. whoever. The oh, Disney right, one right. is so funny because it's like the top seven things you must see, and every item is like actually ten different things. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah, there's a lot of sub things within these things. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but so Pal Mickey was like a stuffed Mickey who would talk, and it would tell you like behind the scenes stuff or like show times, and continue to do this when you went home. So imagine carrying a stuffed Mickey in Orlando Wait, where it rains every day. It's like a, it so talks it's, to you. We're sort of in like a tickle me Elmo zone. Yeah. Um, but specifically, they said you can buy this or rent it at your hotel. So you can rent whoa. a nasty electronic <laughs> stuffed Mickey. <laughs> wow, pal Mickey. This might, we may need to do a yeah, full episode on this. Yeah, we might have to dig into this. pal Mickey because this like predates, like they're putting Alexas in a lot of, in the hotel rooms. It says, yeah, he's the talk of the park on the box. I had never heard of this. Before. I've never, no, I've never seen this. I don't know. It's probably going to be too hard, Ian, for you to see unless you Google it. You can play yeah, games I with t- him. You yeah. can, like, uh, uh, Pal Mickey will speak the names of Disney characters. Uh, for, he'll say things like, when I say Goofy, squeeze my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> when I say the name That's of someone g- who can fly, squeeze my right hand. That's a game Jason and I have played, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I get Does that part of it. Does he say soak your head fresh, boy? Oh, <laughs> very good point. Uh, maybe. <laughs> if you take my gal... <laughs> You take your own head and put it in a fucking toilet. (laughs) (laughs) She she kisses you. Don't. Don't let her. You know what will happen. I don't care if she wants to. (laughs) That sounds like a Mike Love lyric. Like the very few Mike Love pen songs. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Weird, vindictive. Right. Right. Angry. Petty. It says Uh park tips on here, too. So, Mm. yeah. Yeah. Did you know that (laughs) your dad is not... Uh, spending the money that he could be <laughs> he's not unlocking all of the magic that's possible look in your dad's wallet if you see any dollars in there you find somewhere to spend feed, it. yeah feed him into my mouth 
Someone in your family is at that bar at the Swan and Dolphin where people go to have affairs, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> well, that that's the crazy part because, I mean, the resort TV was so, so ingratiated, so known that they spoofed that element of the resort TV. So resort TV worked for my family. I remember very specifically 1992, Disney Inn, they saw the super duper pass advertised and man, we had to upgrade immediately. Oh, my yeah. mom ran yeah, down to the concierge, super duper ticket, here we come. But dinosaurs, a uh, previous topic, spoofed this whole thing in one of my favorite episodes, We Say So Land, where Earl Sinclair is on every channel, or uh, the boss is on every channel and oh. he's telling Earl to buy more stuff at We Say So Land. <laughs> and oh, wow. he can't escape him. Oh, gee. So you could, look, if you were if you were weird, you might mm. say that this, well, we love that you never have to unplug from the Disney machine. Some people view this as, then you go home and are told more ways that you <laughs> could give the company money sure? that you will be giving money to 24-7 for, you know, five, six, seven days. A cynic might, say that mm -hmm. about resort tv that thankfully no cynics are present right. in this room <laughs> or zoom right right so yeah no. cuz cuz uh, yeah this the loop in the 94 one ends with a big push for the vacation club yeah oh which yeah which is yeah, like yeah, yeah like, a lot of those. if you like hey if you like what you're doing right now why go anywhere else ever in the world they'll say in them like you could be a property owner here at the <laughs> <laughs> it's as bald as that yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh by the way there are multiple versions of pal mickey there's like mm -hmm. different outfits and there's a sorcerer's apprentice pal mickey i've never seen this before so yeah. anyway this um, is the, this is the the path to you finding things to be more interested in than your daughter <laughs> <laughs> well no yeah, it's but just... did you know there's something you can take care of that looks like mickey something our daughter does not my daughter does not give me park tips honey i i got you more stuffed animals now you have to keep them in the box and they are rotting they stink uh but you can have them on this high bookshelf where you can't touch them um brett could you bring up uh this is a video, I think this is from the 95 uh, Resort TV. Could you bring up the video called Disney Nights? And it's <laughs> it's just- This, this will get confusing because I also sent a video called Disney Nights. <laughs> Maybe it's the same <laughs> thing. Probably the same thing. It, it's it's uh, a big part. It's tonally, a big deal. it's a very um, of its time sort of thing. Oh yeah. Pleasure Island. That's what it says. And now, <laughs> set your sights on the evening lights. You're having some fun on those Disney nights. Yeah, wow. Oh, that is so yeah. great. That logo is so good. <laughs> that voice. Yeah. When the sun goes down all around, the the nighttime fun comes to your town <laughs> with Disney nights. That's very lecherous, yeah. I'll be honest. It but, makes it funny that then the next thing is like, the luau with Mickey and Minnie. Mickey and Minnie <laughs> will do wear Hawaiian sh skirts for you. <laughs> like the, the things are not very nighty necessarily. Mickey, Mickey takes off his little red shorts and puts <laughs> on a hula skirt. When the sun goes down, so do Mickey's shorts. <laughs> his little red shorts. The moon little. comes up and the skirt does too. <laughs> the the luau hoopty doo review and before that, uh, Broadway at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. are are always pushed but in different ways and like in the 90s and 2000s it's the la it's the other two shows uh, being exciting endeavors and then in the 80s it's like you and your family can enjoy three different dinner theater shows it's just very <laughs> very restrained and the 80s ones too spend like a third of the video Talking about different recreational opportunity. Like, it sounds like Hank Hill <laughs> describing yeah, yeah. Disney World. It's like all now they want you in the park and they want you spending money. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it's like, here's the free recreational activities included at your resort. 1995 was the only time that they wanted you a little horny. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Just a little. Just a little bit. Just a little. But I, I did Hoop see the one talking. <laughs> <laughs> the one pleasure island. It's like there's nightclubs to country music, nineties hits, improv comedy, and it was just like, oh man, no, I don't want to hear improv about comedy. Improv comedy. Yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah. Watch as oh, they get a suggestion. Where will they go? <laughs> 
and you had to get the babysitter too. I mean, that that's a hallmark from Susan. Again, we love Susan. She might be the first girl. I know this is your pot. I don't want to impose my my will here, mm. but you had a lot of guys. You haven't had a lot of girls. Just saying, oh, Susan. She, she's from the a eighty one P- video. She should be a yeah. PTR legend. You think maybe? Oh. Maybe. Uh, or she know, just should come up more on the show. Yes, at least at least the latter. But yeah. she's when is always Susan talking about the- what you, what year do we see Susan? I feel Ooh. like I didn't see Susan. I'd 81. Like oh, 81. 81. She's believed to have been on before that, but <laughs> 81 is, is the. Susan sightings were YouTube. rare, but not uncommon. <laughs> and even before The first documented uh, viewing of Susan was in 1981. <laughs> I'm such a dummy. I went to YouTube and typed in Susan as if that would <laughs> be enough. I'm getting a lot of suggestions for other things. Boyle, Sarandon. No, no, stop. Stop giving me second names. I want Susan <laughs> full stop. Yeah, she, it should be like Cher. Yeah. yeah be known as Susan. Uh, a weird thing, though, is that so there's the early 2000s videos, and that's, I said, that's a woman named Chrissa. And then uh, <laughs> Stacy takes over in 2006. I know this because she posted about it on Instagram. She was there from oh. like 2006 to 2020, um, wow. and but there's a 2000 early 2000s video with Krissa, and then there's a <laughs> Stacy video from a few years later, and she is saying basically the same script. They wow. remade the video. Yeah, they remade the video. Interesting. Humiliating for Krissa. Yeah. So, These were wow. my words. I know them so well. I can recite them by <laughs> heart. Do we know if? So is it like a obviously it's not like a Supreme Court justice where you serve on Disney Resort TV uh, forever? Mm-hmm. Are so we, we sure? I mean, I, I don't want to. Oh, again, I guess you're right. Sure? No, you're yeah, right. We actually we, don't. You're right. No, you're. Uh, we don't know. Maybe they retired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like it in that Stacy has a lot of land holdings from a billionaire that she didn't <laughs> disclose. <laughs> right, right. Some shady Reedy dealings Creek with Stacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. some corruption with Rady Creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. why Ron's going to get in there and uh, take care of all this. But maybe, yeah, maybe Krissa is like, I'm holding out being the resort TV host until a new CEO that is more politically aligned with me comes into power. <laughs> so that's really wow. when, you, when you're a resort TV host, yeah, you have to resign strategically. Wow. So they appoint someone that's more of your, of your sort of political persuasion. So maybe that's what Krissa was doing. I don't know. You, yeah. you, just, you got a target on your back. If whether you're you're Susan or Krissa or Stacy, it's yeah. the position everybody wants. This would be a good choose your fighter screen. Assuming mm-hmm. that we can find, we just need a pay, send us and send us Susan, so we make sure we Susan. can represent Susan properly. Yeah, was Susan, yeah. Who, in eighty one? Who was the CEO? When was E Card Walker? Did E Card Walker appoint Susan to Resort TV? <laughs> I he almost had to. I mean, because he was he was breaking ground on Epcot. He was mm. getting ready. But I wonder if he I wonder if he delegated that because Epcot was so oh, close. Right, right. Epcot mm. getting ready for that. Mm. And one of the things that everybody seems to have in common again, I think. The hosts are for the dads because these are conventionally attractive, maybe mm. 25 to 30 year old women, mm. and the dads are there. And so you might, you know, they might be listening to the conventionally attractive 25 to 30 year old woman more so than J.D. Roth, who was the host of Disney's Inside Out, which they promote during the <laughs> that's, 1986 yeah, that's video. Dad doesn't want to see J.D. Yeah, Roth. No thanks. Well, yeah, give me some eye candy. But dad would like to see the champ, George Foreman. Yes. Because he also hosted Disney Inside and Out. So it's amazing we have not talked more about the the, re- the Disney. That's another. We, in our list of everything that tells you what you could do at Disney World, we forgot, or unless you said it, that there was a weekly show on the Disney Channel where George Foreman shows you what to do yeah. at the parks. And oh. before, what a weird time. Before that, I believe a, a monthly television show, which is a very odd schedule, mm. a once a month TV. That's like the Columbo schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's when they, yeah, when he feels like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, really. Well, and those, win- these the hosts all have a real, like, you know, like don't start picturing it's it's not it's no bikini babe, right? It's, it's no very, Debbie it's the most Dunning. Like, it's no, yeah, yeah, no Debbie Dunning. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> all the babe no of, the, of the decade. Anyone, yeah. Um, no, like you, you know, it's it's the most like kind of Gap ad, uh, like mm-hmm. uh, you know, sporty vest and sweater over. <laughs> 
your shirts mm-hmm. sure. and like uh and it's probably at some point like cargo pants and then maybe they'll like the, you know they'll go to a thing where you know there's like a bunch of uh, uh, dancers of some international flavor and she'll get in there and like whoop whoop like she'll like dance slightly right. for two seconds and then laugh how hard like i can't believe i did the dancing <laughs> yeah it's the same type of woman it just it just shifts uh, as uh-huh. time goes on well in 2001 you since you mentioned gap ad the 2001 video it's uh four or six people in different colored polo shirts and khakis and they're they're not really established who they are or what they're doing or why we would know them uh Jane okay. was guessing they were like in park uh, face characters because she's like, oh, that could be a princess, that could be Aladdin, you know, that could. Mm-hmm. Um, but they and they they do that like um, editing trick of like they pop in from the side of the screen or like they're upside down from the top of the screen mm-hmm. oh, we're to tell you in the 2000s. to check yeah. out one of the videos. By the way, does. Uh, uh, I know I I was uh, I looked a bit foolish when I suggested people uh, read the brochures or guidebooks before they go to the park back in the nineties. I gave uh, uh, was when it Aaron? When did you look foolish? I uh, well, I I I believe it was Aaron's father who hated the Living Seas Pavilion. Or oh yeah, was yeah, it yeah. your father? They went to uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was Aaron's family. They went to Epcot. The first thing they got on was the sea cabs. They were like, "This oh, sucks. Yeah. We hate this place," and they left. <laughs> so only so my wife and I only did e- we discovered Epcot together because she Aww. threw it all under the her family hated the sea cabs so much. <laughs> yeah. Is, so, that a, is that a, is that a controversy? Ian, am I? I don't know your leanings. Is that is that I, uh, too harsh? I on love the Epcot, case? but that was the maddest my father has ever been at me. I <laughs> I, I, ac- <laughs> I accidentally Ooh, smashed a virgin strawberry daiquiri at the Living Seas. Um, it was the big meal. It was to celebrate my parents' anniversary. It was their ten year anniversary mm. in 1996. We were in the Living Seas with the sharks and or the the fish and everything around. They got me a virgin strawberry daiquiri. Not only did I spill it, the glass smashed, and I've never been yelled out louder in my life. So, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Dark family yeah. memories abound at the Living Seas. Mm. I guess so. Uh, uh, so. Sorry, you were in the middle. Well, so, but what uh, I was going to say, the, the 1987 Resort TV video, uh, a very dry man says, to make the most of your visit to Epcot Center in the Magic Kingdom, review your guidebooks before you arrive. So, you I would say done, I'm you vindicated, done your but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you need to watch the channel that tells you that you should have read your book. Yes. <laughs> only then. <laughs> yeah, uh, channel's only 17 minutes long, so. Uh, 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 <laughs> speaking of something for the dads, and when I say dads, I mean me, daddy, uh, specifically me. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's a clip I found again in 94 that I I almost fell off my chair when I was reviewing this clip um, because it comes out of nowhere. And there's sometimes I think on these there would be all of a sudden kind of an ad for a Disney adjacent thing, not something necessarily parks related. Um, but someone appeared on the screen and I guess I'm going to give it away by name, the file name when I call it for it right here, Brett. Um, but if you Brett, if you could play the uh, file just that's called Frakes, uh, I would appreciate it. Because this gentleman appeared, and I, I, I've edited just his sort of dialogue together from this. This is an ad for Disney's Gargoyles, hosted by Jonathan Frakes, one of my <laughs> favorite guys <laughs> ever. In room, only in yes. your hotel room. Can you yes. watch this exclusive Frakes? Yes, and Frakes, by the way, on Picard season three, is killing it. He is flawless. He is right. He is maybe the best of all the actors, on, and they're all doing great. But I'm very excited about Picard. But here we go. This is Jonathan Frakes, 1994. Gargoyles in room promo. I'm Jonathan Frakes, one of the actors helping to bring the new animated series Gargoyles to life. What are gargoyles? They're ugly stone statues that adorn the walls of old buildings. There was a time, 1,000 years ago, when gargoyles were real, living creatures. Now the castle has been moved from its homeland to the top of New York's tallest skyscraper. I play David Sanatos, the rich and powerful businessman who seeks to exploit the might of the gargoyles for his own purposes. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. This is so exciting when I saw this. And I didn't see, if I had seen this when I was a kid, because I was a big Next Generation fan as a kid, so this would have... I would have been much more excited than seeing any sort of uh, nice lady. Oh my god! 
uh, uh, freaks alert, freaks alert. So yeah, so uh, yeah. that you could see, yeah, stuff like this. There was a time on this earth when man could marry a gargoyle. <laughs> no one would look down on this. It would be celebrated. Everyone he, from the village would come out with it, their gargoyle wives and applaud you. <laughs> yes, I wish. My only complaint was this was not an hour long. Uh, this is yeah. and this is before Beyond Belief uh, Fact or Fiction. Which mm-hmm. is the Fox show where he would they would show you like little short stories and ask you is it uh, fact or fiction and then he would reveal at the end and he was very dramatic and yeah like, have you ever repaired a bicycle like have you ever <laughs> it kind of looks up a like hill with a set. long yes it looks like the set as well yes yeah there was smoke on the set uh, and people have made great compilations of of these videos too so so the pitch on that show might have been have you ever sauntered around a smoky blue room and mm-hmm. said intriguing things <laughs> i have and i'd like to do it again <laughs> gentlemen i have a television idea for you <laughs> another uh, resident of the lehigh valley i'd rather and said no offense to daniel roebuck but jonathan frakes really rather have him on the ho- on the hospital billboard promoting vaccines at all times wow what? Just that's out there. crazy they, they aren't hyping frakes roebuck no. over frakes it's adult film star devin it's the the champ larry holmes it really? is Lisa Ann, another adult film star. JTT. <laughs> what? There's two adult uh, film stars that are, are like prominently displayed. Well, they're they're notable. They're the about. notable figures here. So we've I'm had not saying Andre they shouldn't Reed. be notable. Sure. I'm just saying sure. Commander Will Riker should also have a spot at the table. Absolutely, it okay. should be Amanda Seyfried, Riker, Larry Holmes, various adult film stars. In my opinion, <laughs> great. <laughs> this is a very interesting collection to throw out the first pitch at the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs minor right. league baseball team. Uh, right. So, uh, briefly, uh, briefly called the Lehigh Valley Scrapple. The Scrapple. Yes. Uh, theme. Is that true? Oh, yeah. It it is. Is. Yes. How yeah. is this never? Do you come have up? the cap? So I have the cheesesteaks hat in my office. Okay. So, so, but every year they they change. I'm currently wearing an Iron Pigs hat. They 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 have a great merchandise director, Mike Luciano Luch. They have a, uh, a very innovative general manager who did did uh, win your own funeral night. You <laughs> as you went into the as you went into the ballpark, he handed you a ticket. Wow, and, uh, really? They, they did a nice drawing. You went you won a casket. You could win a casket that night. <laughs> Just one of the one of the great minds in minor league baseball. And yeah, they, they were uh, for one night last two two seasons ago. They were the Scrapple. Uh, which is very exciting night in the Lehigh Valley. Yeah. Wow. wow. Jason, why weren't you there doing something? Like, that <laughs> seems like we should have flown you out. Yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> I 100% agree. You should have been playing have, in the game. I've had the hat. I, they still, there's uh, not the M, the MILB website. You can buy minor league merch, and they do have a, a hat with like a piece mm. of Scrapple on it. Wow. Ian, how do you feel in general about East Coast meets? Love wow. these, love them all. I love them all. Um, and I'll tell you what the that was one of my biggest difficulties at Disney World because I was so used to these weird East Coast meats like Scrapple, um, like the Canadian bacon. Um, you know, just used to just weird East Coast. You know, I was talking to Jason briefly. You know, he's from a little further south. I'm from a little farther north, but generally the same area. Mm-hmm. And we have just various concoctions and and just mixes of meats that you really don't find in the American Southeast. So that was always a difficulty going mm. to Disney World as a kid because as a kid, you're a picky eater. So I ate a lot of bananas and cereal at Continental <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> That's okay. Sure. Do, can, can I yeah. ask, do you, maybe this is too personal, but do you have Scrapple in the house? Not in the house. Uh, I will order Scrapple. I have ordered Scrapple at the diners around here. We have a okay. lot of diners. We I've worked at some of the diners around here, the Emmaus Diner, uh, giving free publicity here. Sure. But, um, you know, the it's Scrapple is readily available. In fact, okay. if you don't have Scrapple, uh, one of the reasons I don't go to the Waffle House in the area is because they don't have Scrapple. Wow. Okay. So that's like a must when you're having like a, a fun diner meal. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Hmm. It also feels like, so you, I guess your ideal iteration of World Showcase on a childhood Epcot trip was that it's like Japan, Italy, Philadelphia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's, so you bring up a good point. As someone from the area, and maybe Jason can relate, a lot of the American pavilion is centered solely around Philadelphia and around the American Revolution. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the, but- the American pavilion and um, 
Liberty Square also mm-hmm. like very both those places like very familiar because it's like well we already we saw these on day trips we see all this right. crap all the time or we live next to it you know right so <laughs> and the we least... have a fake oh I'm sorry Scott no, no, we no, have no, a right. fake no, no, yeah. we have a fake Liberty Bell in Allentown so it was weird the progression it was like a reverse Russian nesting doll because I would see the fake Liberty mm-hmm. Bell that they created to hide the real Liberty Bell in Allentown. And then I would went to Philadelphia, saw the real Liberty Bell, <laughs> and then I would go see the slightly enlarged, embellished Liberty Bell at Liberty Square within the confines of the American <laughs> Pavilion. <laughs> which which bell was your favorite of the three? Oh, oh, you can't make me choose. I'm okay. sorry. That's one question I won't answer. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Toughest question. Jason, have you seen these either. bells? Uh, I've well, I've seen the uh, original. Okay. In Philadelphia. Yeah. So you've uh, seen the Disney World yeah, one. Yeah, seen the Disney World. But you haven't I'm seen sure the I've Allentown seen a, one. I, I don't think I've seen the Allentown one. I'm sorry. I, have you seen the Lego one in the Philadelphia airport? That one's pretty I cool, I have seen too. the Lego one a number of times. <laughs> okay, well, that's yeah. three, Jason. Which one? Which huh? one do you like of those three? Pick a bell. Uh, uh, I had to go with the classic, even though it's kind of like fortified. It's like Fort Knox now. It's oh, surrounded get, by so you, much glass. You can't get close. No, you can't. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so uh, original we got. Well, we'll we, do a we're fake, missing, um, fake Bell Final Four next year. Oh, that's year. A, well, that's a great. Well, I was gonna say you can't ignore uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Oh yeah, and if you make it out sure. here, we get there's a Knott's Berry Farm fake Bell too, and they're fake Independence Hall. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's gotta a be lot. a lot of f- fake bells. I hadn't considered that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just too many bells. So what they what there should have been if there's already so much Philly presence, it essentially the America air American Adventure should be called just Philadelphia, mm. and then and there should be you should be able to get an upside down Liberty Bell full of Scrapple. Oh, oh wow. sure. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there's your that is a your really good idea. Philly. I mean, they have that. Uh, Stand the Eagle Barbecue Restaurant now. Yes. So yeah. it's not much of a leap to do like a Philadelphia meat tasting play. You get scrapple, you get pork roll, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ham? You get hot and sweet Italian sausage. Ooh. A, a common breakfast. If you go to a diner and order like breakfast, that it, it's like a long list, right, Ian, of like meats you could get. And in some parts of the Northeast, they're like, would you like some hot Italian sausage with your pancakes? <laughs> and it's delicious, you know? I mean, it sounds yeah, good. I, yeah. And you can even get various salamis. Like, if you go to the right places, you, you'd be amazed at what kind of curated and salted meats you can get with your breakfast. Sure. Was yeah. this ever a consideration for you, Jason, in moving to Los Angeles? <laughs> the difficulty of leaving the meat options behind? Well, you know, someone when we did the uh, our first show at Dynasty Typewriter, someone did bring me like a pound of Scrapple. So, that works. so as long so, as listeners bring you the as meats long as that they, you, I think as long as you use our audience as a meat delivery service, then uh, <laughs> then you then you're fine not having it in your native land. I think there's a butcher or two in L.A. that will do like a case, like a a thing of pork roll. You want to give Which some names out? Favorite. We have a show coming up. I don't, I don't up, know so the name. Listeners, yeah, Jason's yeah. Uh, Jason's got an empty fridge. I, pork roll is usually my go-to. If you Taylor could, ham, as it's called in some parts of New Jersey. If you could give him a piece of meat that's as big as the uh, meat Fred Flintstone gets put on the side of his car at the start of the Flintstones, <laughs> that would be really good. The bigger the piece of meat for Jason, the better. <laughs> so attack him after the sh- Not attack. I shouldn't say that. Place the meat on. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Wait for Jason to get in his car pull around, wave him down in the street, and then put the giant piece of meat on the side of Jason's car, <laughs> I, yeah. weighing Jason's car over, and it falls o- tips over mm-hmm. on yeah. one side. Mm-hmm. That's how we should do it. And he'd be mad at first until he realized what was happening. Right. Oh, it's a big slab. Exactly. I'm in heaven now. And sure. Then, yeah. And then, I don't know, he'll figure it out from there. <laughs> um, uh, what else we got in resort TV? Can I just, you know, some so an aspect we have not talked about um is music i am just in heaven especially in these 90s ones because listeners might know i love my just like hotel jazz Mm. like just whatever's playing you know like the spotify mix that the band telethon sent me of what would have been playing in the contemporary lobby circa 94 (laughs) i put this Mm -hmm. on so much it relaxes me so much and uh uh, brett if there's a video called magic kingdom tip and this just gives you this is just like the oxygen to the brain of delightful anonymous uh, jazz and graphic transitions. This is this is what you need to hear. Hi, 
I'm Denise. Here's a tip and to make sure you nice don't miss a single Denise, minute of everything that's uh, happening here at Walt Disney in, World. Like, uh, you can a pick Mickey up the theme park suit. guidebook and entertainment schedule. Um, she's really talking too loud to over the, so the, the music. The but yeah, I wish. Yeah, yeah, it really gets in the way. But those little transitions, I really, because yeah. I will look. Ian, you brought this up as a topic where for many years I've been putting these on my wife and I just like. What do we we want something brainless. We don't want to get involved in a you know in a in a serious plot of mm. a movie or something that's gonna upset it. Can we just like crack open some wine and watch some resort TV <laughs> and feel wow. like we are in the the uh, the Magic Kingdom? We're in the the Vacation Kingdom, circa nineteen ninety five. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because I have one of the most caring, understanding wives in the world. I travel a lot and I'm away from home a lot. We have two kids. I put her in impossible situations, mm. but the biggest backlash I've ever gotten from my wife was there was a streak during the pandemic where early on, when we weren't sure how much we had to stay in our house, where the only two things I would want to put on the TV were Dick Tracy and the Walt Disney World Resort television. Wow. And it got to a, <laughs> it got to a boiling point. And <laughs> I'm wondering if this is like that chemical they say your brain releases before you think you're going to die, where you try and <laughs> you just have that one moment of euphoria. I'm wondering if I was chasing that because yeah. it, it just it just ties all of those things tie so much to some of the last like absolutely 100% carefree moments mm -hmm. that I've kind of crystallized in my mind. And I, I was trying to chase those Maybe I was trying to chase those down just in case the, the it's plague. It's all over. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I was saying at the beginning about wanting your life to flash before your eyes with pleasant music like that. Absolutely. There's something so cosmically. <laughs> I feel like certain listeners, if you've never watched one of these blogs, you might be like, okay, they've played clips and everything, but now they are saying that this is like the be all end all of their existences. <laughs> They're watching these uh, and that it's it's a conflict in a marriage that uh, you, can, you can't watch them uh, during the, but there is, uh, boy, I mean, you guys know, you've watched these just for fun. It's, sure. Oh. It really, it's so much, it is like getting a little quick, like for this half hour that I'm watching this, I'm getting a miniature trip not just to disney world but to the past of disney world well yeah. yeah i i will watch these i will go so far as there's a channel on youtube it's just a constant live stream it's called wdw today and it is the bulletin board channel it's like a recreation of the bill uh bulletin board channel uh and it just plays forever which and it just tells just, you like the park the weather, hours, the park and park hours. <laughs> and it's just wow. I will put that on when I'm like puttering around the house, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it's it's the one thing that has really been consistent too with the excitement of Disney World with with my kids and I. And there's there's rides that they like that maybe Zach likes that I like or Nora, our daughter, that I like. But there's always difference of opinion. But the first thing that they've done when we've gone to Art of Animation or when we've gone to the different resort hotels is they want to turn on the TV. They want to see, they wow. want to see what's going on at the theme park. One of the things that they like that I like is seeing the characters in situations they normally wouldn't be in. Another hallmark that you see a little, they give you a taste. They give you just a little, maybe Goofy's on the ride or mm. that shot of all the characters of all our best friends just standing in front of the, the, the castle like we just saw. Sure. You know, they just want yeah. Wow. Wow. Or like, the, you know, what you always get is the, the characters golfing. You get like, yes. Oh, yeah. And Pluto or, or Goofy yeah. and Pluto out on the links. The, I, I've talked about this before where I want the, the characters working in the park more because I think and this resort TV may have set the unrealistic standard that they were actually the ones like operating the park or participating in the park more like on a tourist level, which, of course, is not possible. But I do wonder because, yeah, when you watch these they're in all sorts of situations that you're probably not going to see them in the actual park. Hmm. Yeah, this could be a false memory, but in one of the film and television ones, I, I think Goofy is a director in, in that MGM oh, attraction. Oh, maybe, yeah. Or, or Donald has a clack, a clackboard. Um, so, biggest yeah, they're... Biggest mistake of production. Could yeah, be. jeez. Come on. Did you even <laughs> interview these candidates? Yeah. That's... You know what they're going to get up to. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's going to end up like a... Josh Trank, uh, it's Fantastic Four <laughs> situation. You don't want it. It's going to be all, all sorts of chaos. Um, I fired Kelsey Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like my vision. I Goofy really was set to do a Star Wars movie, <laughs> and then he got fired, sadly. Me and Trevor had a lot to bond about. 
<laughs> I, Go ahead, Jason. I, I liked watching, going through a bunch of these. I like seeing the stuff that, like, I don't think the Fort Wilderness Resort has an old timey car that sells dry goods at each campsite anymore. <laughs> or, uh, uh, God Brett, damn will it. you? Sorry, I gotta go punch the wall at that one. I know, <laughs> I know. Cost <laughs> cutting, goods. cost cutting ruins people's memories. Uh, Brett, will you bring up the one titled Empress Lily Riverboat? Uh, oh, and just these mm. old photo, these old footage of people eating like pretty gnarly looking food always mm. makes me laugh. <laughs> Uh, or step on board the beautiful Empress Lily Riverboat in Walt Disney World Village and select from three fine restaurants, the Empress Room, Fisherman's Deck, or Steerman's Quarters. The Steerman's Quarters. Wait, what do we Can we look at that, uh, at that plate of food? What do we yeah, got? What do we go got back. in there? <laughs> I, I, I don't recognize what's in the middle. Jason, could you venture again? Yeah, what do you think that, that is? filet of sole? It looks like white fish. Hmm. And with like broccoli with just like splats of mayo or vanilla ice cream on top. Sure. <laughs> um, Multiple like there's like, okay, make sure there are several gravy, but we promise you multiple. on the Empress Lily, we are a boat and you will get several gravy boats yeah. upon seating or your meal is free. Right. But there's just, I mean, there's so much in those really early ones of like very old people who look like they have only eaten the lobster thermidor at every meal for year. Like they are, do they look like they are falling to p pieces <laughs> and the food just looks awful. <laughs> uh, uh, is it, are you really upset mostly because there's not any sort of uh, East Coast meats? presented mm. there um no no the presence of lobster thermidor is okay. fine you don't see that that That's often fair. anymore but there's there's other weird like there's no way this is still around anymore breck will you queue up a uh, wonder of walt disney world this is another thing there was a few things that like oh i forgot about the walk around chicken little or the uh wonders of <laughs> no. walt disney world school credit uh course that you can take and fill out on your own time what? you knew that and forgot no about no it? i i i never knew that interesting wonders of walt disney world a special entertainment program for youngsters 10 to 15 proves that learning can be fun this program takes advantage of the rich learning resources of Walt Disney World Resort to provide courses in energy, creative arts, entertainment, and ecology. For more information and enrollment in Wonders of Walt Disney World, call 828-2405. I'm so confused by what we just yeah. saw. There was a bunch of kids like uh, being taught and they're just being shown a bunch of pipes. Where are they? What is this? What school is well, this? Well, plants. There were some plants. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Pipes can be closed. Some pipes are close to plants. Learn about pipes some and plants. Some are far away. Uh, and some then do a worksheet. can fit into pipes. And then do a worksheet in yeah. the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> My guess is like, okay, uh, take your kids out of school. Bring them here when they're in school. Oh, you and think that? we oh, have oh. educational opportunities. Because we would always, like, if we went, we went a couple times during the school year. And inevitably, someone would try to go like, well, write a how I spent my vacation report. Like, you would mm. try to look for like, oh, I guess this is educational. Mm. I have to like uh, go through the motions of doing this. Mm. I see. This yeah. is like the roots of when you get met, you, when you think of like, oh, I'm going to the park, but it's for work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's, oh, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna do it for fun, but work one trip, trip yeah. for work. Yeah. Um, the, also, one thing, if you're trying to convince people that learning can be fun, you cannot say it in the voice, learning can be fun. <laughs> that is the funniest <laughs> right? shot. You gotta <laughs> give it to something or get fire a different voiceover person. Or just try it sexier, you know? Ooh, look on Disney nights, learning can be fun. <laughs> See what you learn about on Disney nights. Disney night school. <laughs> so I will say this, my wife did a master's in international education and she actually connected with Living with the Land in <gasps> 2011, 2012. Part of her project was farm-to-table food and part of her thesis. And they were actually able to provide her some resources and, and point her in the right direction in some of the things that were more difficult to find out. So, yeah, there, they, there are actual – it's funny because what they advertise – was totally what Jason said. It was, hey, can we get, can you do something with the kid? Can we get him a note? 
And great, he was here, he learned something. But if you actually contact them with reasonable education requests, it's been my experience, my wife's experience, that they will actually respond and, and give you some information. That's the funniest thing about that footage is it's like the driest narrator, the boringest like <laughs> footage of kids scribbling begrudgingly in worksheets. But yeah, there's real educational, there's scientists, there's um, food science people, there's biologists, like that will talk to you. So, okay, mm-hmm. here's what I think. You know, very famously, Scott... Um, Got a lot of maybe listeners upset because mm-hmm. he said that he, he didn't love living with the land. Yeah. There were some things that oh. used to be on the ride that uh, they removed, which we agree were better. Mm-hmm. The song, of course, being no one's one. ever been able to provide a good defense to why it's better without the song. Right? No, and Scott's I don't. Right? On I that wouldn't one. say that. Scott at all. is right at Gmail. But perhaps if we reach out and ask for an academic opportunity for you. <laughs> Yeah. In a clinical way, like a sort of a yeah, learning scientific way, mm. perhaps this is the key to unlocking your love of living with the land. So yeah. if I'm able to do an immersive and learn all about farm to table, <laughs> if we yeah. send right. you on the behind the seeds tour, mm-hmm. which maybe was not that's running true. last time yeah. I was there, but is back, it's I back. believe. Mm-hmm. And then maybe yeah, they'll have a couple worksheets for you to do, and then you'll sort of test your knowledge of what you've learned that day, and then we'll redo the episode, and yeah. it'll be a whole different ball game. I guess probably why the ride hasn't stuck with me is that I did not do enough worksheets. That's because right. That's where you really it like yeah. codifies what you just experienced if you write right. it down. And silly me, I was just running off to the mm-hmm. next ride, a ride with a voiceover, or more to look at. Right. Um, but I maybe worksheets are the key. Yeah, and I you weren't go ahead. Yeah, 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 you weren't yet told by Resort TV that you needed to do the pre work. Involved in going to living with the land, <laughs> right? <It's... laughs> if you're planning on visiting living with the land, read the brochure that explains why the ride is interesting. <laughs> then fill out the brochure at the end the... to make sure that you understood what you saw. The this... brochure is a scantron. If you look on the back, <laughs> and you can fill in the little rectangles, and in... we will run it through the scantron reader at living with the land. A score of less than seventy percent will require you to go on living with the land again. <laughs> <laughs> this is the tone, by the way, that they used to sell you at, on Epcot Center in the 1983 video. Yeah. Pavilions based on transportation, <laughs> imagination, computers. Like, it is the <laughs> lowest energy. Space travel. Yeah, wait, I wrote down one of those that, yeah, like, this is an exciting sentence if you said it excitingly, but they say it like, Epcot Center is a new world of wonder. You'll want to take the time to fully explore Two days would be optimal for... Yeah, well, it sounds like... Oh, well, I mean, you sound excited, so I guess I mm-hmm. should be too. Yeah, two think, days. Two oh, days for Epcot, two days for Magic Kingdom. That's what they suck with. Um, do you, you think he thinking? was the father of the teen ride attendant? Because all of the teen mm. ride attendant... Do you think he was the, the, the godfather of that voice? Because every teen ride attendant that I've seen oh. at Dorney Park, at Disney World, Six Flags has that voice just in their own way. Oh, like, please keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Enjoy the enjoy your ride on Twister. Was that the professor at the M&M show as well? That oh, you yeah, yeah. I, am, yeah. yeah. I am the professor. Uh, we're <laughs> doing some incredible M&M's experiments today. Wait a minute, Red. Red, what are you doing? Don't mess with that, Red. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's a very good point. I mean, you know, I would be sad if this went away, honestly, but like, does it sell me on the fun of doing worksheets in the park on my vacation? Not necessarily, but is it part of the the comfort that I get from these places? Is the the list listen that I'm watching people in a place of entertainment mm-hmm. be not even half speed, be like ten percent of the energy a, a human being should be able to <laughs> to manifest? And it, it's and, and sometimes the musical equivalents of voices like this. I I love right. the du- and that's why I don't know if I I always like the must do Disney's with Stacy because we're sure cutting a lot. Where this person looks like they're having a lot of fun, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Uh-huh. That's interesting, Ian. I mean, you're a broadcaster. Have you ever thought about? how you would approach hosting one of these videos i would it would be a dream come true i mean it would be you know i i've got to work madison square garden i've got to work uh aew pay-per-views new japan pay-per-views sure 
the Disney in resort TV would <laughs> would just would absolutely be the top of the top. I've got to work with Gideon Diego. I mean, who like what <laughs> you know? How, you, you would think maybe you couldn't top that. No, I, he was he was very nice. I shouldn't choke. He was a very nice man. But uh, but yeah, I would approach it. Um, with a little pep in my step. I don't know that I'm for the dads, but one of the strange things in these videos, they are hyper-inclusive even to the 81 video. There's women playing tennis, which I didn't think, you know, because of our cultural norms was shown on TV until like 2015. <laughs> mm. um, DeSantis are... put a stop to That's now illegal again. <laughs> but, right. but it, yeah, right. for a brief window, it, it was allowed. And and there's men men doing childcare, which again mm. in 1983, <laughs> right. not a thing that was in the zeitgeist. And there's people of color interacting with one another, which again you'd be surprised, not something that was shown on on network sure. television often, even through 1981. So wow. uh, these in resort TVs were very kind of ahead of their time. They were kind of culturally relevant. They were very progressive. Uh, I think I think our friend Ron would probably say that the woke mind virus was infecting the mm. Disney Resort TV at the time. But <laughs> right, it's it's something now that you can look back on, and and it was pretty cool that that they were on the right path and something mm. to be nostalgic for. Just was accounting for all of the folks that could and would come to Disney. Was it driven by money? Absolutely. They wanted to get everybody of every... <laughs> Sometimes uh, it works out that way. <laughs> right. Uh, um, but the, Oh, so yeah. the people putting the videos together are, you know, these are, are wonderfully made. There's wonderfully shot footage throughout mm -hmm. them still to this day. They're, they're wonderfully made, wonderfully edited, uh, uh, great music, great performances. We like all our, our everybody from Susan to Stacy. Uh, um, you know, like they're sure they're getting the marching orders from the evil entity that wants to uh, spend as much. It wants you to spend as much as possible. But there's there's some hearts in within sure. the assignment yeah. in these, I think. Sure. A hundred percent. And and Mike, to get back to your question, I would mm. put my heart and soul into it. I would I would study the greats. I would study Susan. I would study Stacy. I would mm -hmm. study Dennis Marsico, the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in, of in MGM Studios. I. Uh, I would call J.D. Roth. I'd try and connect with him on LinkedIn and give me his best delivery tips on how to convey what time is the best time <laughs> to go to the hoop de doo review. And, and really, um, you know, what time is the best time to go to the Virgin Megastore, even though I uh, R.I.P. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it just and I would, you know, I would listen. I would I would soul search. Uh, I might do that thing Aaron Rodgers did where he went into a place of seclusion and was not <laughs> connectable by anybody uh -huh. to really just to just feel feel resort TV in, in my heart. Well, look, if any, look, this if anybody's listening to this from the Disney corporate, like you've proven, I think, by now that you're the guy for the job, I think. Um, Thank so. You. So, yeah, I mean, they'll, they're they're obviously knowing you're going to do the work. Um, you already have, they know you have the chops and now they know you have the passion. Yeah, that was, I appreciate that. Th that little speech was beautiful. I think we have elevated what we've been talking about this whole time in a wonderful way. And the only thing I might say before we go out is like, feel free to just like, okay, what what I my question is, of course you would do it with with passion and conviction. Uh, um, mm -hmm. but is there like, you know, there's recurring things in all of these videos. It's always the same. You know, like climb aboard a doom buggy and take a trip to the 990 like there's like recurring almost like the same things are said no matter what year it is about the rides or about like the nightlife heating up at pleasure island is does, does something flash to your mind of like i want that i want to narrate that i want to tell everybody in every disney world hotel about this thing and and, and i might do it this way do you flash? and if you don't yeah. have anything i have copy i can give you but uh but sure uh, uh feel I free I would love to tell folks in, in extremely broken Spanish and German about the pavilions that they could go see. Oh, uh, wow. That would be uh, so broken that it might be charming, but also broken enough that they think I might be being disrespectful. Mm. So, yeah, that would, that, there's one yeah. or two videos where it's like they say a food dish you can get at each pavilion and they're doing some voices, uh, but yes. it, you know, we're not going to throw around names here. We're not going to throw around names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It wasn't Susan. I'll, I know that. Susan, <laughs> and not wow. my dear Susan. Cultural mm -hmm. respect, sensitivity, everything that you would bring uh, uh, to this job, which we hope well, maybe we've given you a good audition here. And what a delightful thing to, to talk to you about for a while. Uh, Ian Riccoboni, you survived podcast The Ride. What a pleasure to have you. Uh, uh, let's, let's exit through the gift shop. Is there anything you'd like to plug? 
Sure. I would uh, love to plug Ring of Honor. That's that's kind of my home base, home promotion. Uh, if you like professional wrestling, Ring of Honor is pretty bare bones. It's uh, it was one to quote the great Richard Christie, who once called a wrestling show. Mm. It's about the wrestling in, in Ring of Honor. So mm-hmm. uh, we have a lot of fun there. I'm on New Japan World quite often, which is another. Uh, Jap- it's a Japanese wrestling promotion, quite fun. And uh, every Wednesday night on on TBS, and every Friday night. Um, on TNT, AEW is on, and occasionally I pop in and say hello there. Uh, I get, I do get excited though. I get passionate, I, and I wish, I just wish maybe there was some. Scott, you mentioned you had some copy. Well, I oh, just, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, Ian, you might be going. I think you might be going somewhere that was interesting to me. Uh, I think is that what you're, are we on yeah. the same page here? Yes. Okay. I think hmm. so. Um, because Wait, fill me in. Well, real quick, I just wanted to say too. You can get um, it's uh, Ring of Honor is on Honor. Is it HonorClub.com? Is that right? Honor. It's uh, HonorClub.com. Watch Watch dot com is gotcha. how I remember it. And you get um, the Ring of Honor app. It'll take you right there. Uh, yes. Twenty years of of wrestling history. Samoa Joe, CM Punk, Brian Danielson. Uh, everybody that's ever Legends. been anybody has come through Ring of Honor. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, um, but yeah. So so I texted Ian uh, earlier today because I had an idea oh. um, and I wanted to put his his particular skills uh, not to the test. I just wanted to show off. And, uh, you know, there's a thing on the po- on the podcast that's come up a few times now. We did a, a second gate on something called the hyperspace hoopla. And it is, of course, a, a, a dance off with Star Wars characters where yep. you would see, like, you know, modern songs would play and uh, Darth Maul would twerk or whatever. And something <laughs> happens at the end of the video that we sort of had a bit of a debate about. Mm. Uh, a certain character appears. Jason and I were a little bit more on the side of the audience who seemed shocked that this is what had actually happened. Yeah. And Scott was a little more skeptical because he said, well, this character is in the parks already. What's what's the big deal about it? Yeah. Now, I did not view it as the finest live theatrical moment ever right. assembled. No. Uh, um, but so so I thought, you know what? Ian uh, 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 does, you know, play by play for professional wrestling. And I thought maybe if he added his voice to this clip, it would be a little more clear. You would feel the excitement more because oh. he, he, he does this very often when he has to set, you know, somebody runs down a ramp and, and you didn't know they were going to be there. Yeah. He adds that bit of excitement. So I have, I sent him this clip and I said, would you do us the honor of essentially calling this part of the hyperspace oh hoopla? And uh, Brett, if you could, it says uh, dance. It says dance at the start of the clip. Should we close it out with this? Should I we should I say oh, the boring yeah, yeah, let's stuff? Do and let's do that. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, for, uh, hey, that. you for us, you can find us on the socials at Podcast The Ride. We got merch in our T Public Store for three bonus episodes every month. Check out Podcast The Ride, the second gate, or get one more bonus episode on our VIP tier Club Three. You will find all of that at Patreon.com/slash Podcast The Ride. Now that that's out of the way, let's let's go out on the true uh, uh, order of the day. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited for this. Okay. Okay, here we go. And we're starting here with um, uh, Queen Amidala and Princess Leia dancing. And here we go, Queen Amidala, Princess Leia, Gangnam Style. Here you see the Mos Eisley Cantina, the Gamorrean Guard, Darth Vader in the house with the Stormtroopers. I see a Tuscan Raider, things are getting wild. Darth Maul there with the Royal Guard. And we are really getting down now. We are moving, we are shaking, but what is this? <laughs> Wait just a minute. Could it be? Yes, there he is. The big man himself. The mouse is in the house, Mickey Mouse. The one true Jedi gracing us with his presence here, and he's getting down. He's getting down at Hyperspace Hoopla. Mickey Mouse in the house, M-O-U-S-E. Wow. Channeling Michael Jackson as he points to the sky. <laughs> what a way to end things here today on Podcast the Ride. Unbelievable. Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced Dog. by Mike Carlson, Jason Sheridan, Scott Gardner, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.